Hello and welcome everyone to another round of testing the autopilot. So today I have the exclusive opportunity to test out version 9 on Belgian roads with update 2018.39.7. Um, first thing I notice is that the car is further ahead on the display and also the lines are much closer to the car but that is probably to accommodate more uh, lanes when you're driving on the highway. So, yep, let's see what's what with this update. So the first thing I noticed is that the lines are way closer to the car and that's also displaying the second lane next to me when we're uh, in the uh, dotted line section. So uh, normally we should be able to do a auto lane change on this road a little further up ahead. Uh, but let's see when we get there. Oh, the car was jittering a little bit there. That's not so good. Uh, but let's see. Yep, it is displaying in the lane next to me. And now what does it do at the top of the hill? It's just moving dead ahead and here at the wider lane oh it is seeking the middle of the wider lane a little bit more than it does in my car but not too bad here we're coming up at that intersection where it loses lanes on our lines on the left and then on the right let's see how it reacts here last update for me it went dead straight yep same here it's doing just fine and now let's see whether it detects the uh, next lane yep so it detects the next lane that means if I want to initiate the lane change it should go yep we can now do an auto lane change on secondary roads Woohoo! way to go Tesla going back to the right same thing also what I notice is a little bit different is that the lines are uh, or the dotted lines are actually moving when you are uh, doing the lane change whereas on my car it actually just displays the dotted lines in a static position so here we are coming up at the dreaded s-curve again so let's see what version 9 brings us for handling this so what I would expect is that the car slows down before the turn and then keeps centered in the turn my car does only slow down in the curve and it goes over the center line and it drives on the other side in the gutter so let's see if we can get this car to do it better here we go oh yeah that is a lot better Let's see on the other side here. Wow, I am officially impressed. V9, bring it on. So this is really what I was hoping for a long time already to get on uh, uh, Autopilot 2. And this is more or less the way Autopilot 1 handles this curve. Way to go Tesla. So let's see when the car is slowing down for the truck how the lane change goes so we are starting to slow down and it is accelerating now already so that is better than it used to be uh, we used to have to go to the middle lane and then like three quarters of the way into the middle lane it would go at the speed of the truck and after that it would only accelerate so that's an improvement Let's see if we can repeat this. So here the car is starting to slow down for the other cars. Let's see if it continues to slow down. Yes, lane change initiated and it is a... Whoa, whoa. There was a car behind me and it did not want to do the lane change, but the car was still some ways behind me. So it actually used the rear view camera probably or the side camera on uh, on the flank to uh, look at that car because it was not yet within the range of the uh, 
of the ultrasonics. So that's interesting. So it actually uses the camera to indicate the lane change, whether or not it's possible from further ahead or from further back than what the range of the uh, ultrasonics is. So that was a very interesting lane change uh, scenario because the car behind me, the, uh, the gray BMW, that one uh, was in the lane I wanted to merge to. At the moment that I blinked, then uh, that car moved over to the third lane. Uh, but at the same time, the car in front of me was moving to my lane. So there was a lot of movement regarding lane changes and me wanting to do lane changes. And I think uh, the car handled it beautifully. So I did hold the uh, blinker. Uh, it wanted to initiate, it moved back to its own lane. And then without the second command, it then cleared the path for the lane change and actually did the lane change there, um, which, is, uh, which is cool. That's the way we like to see it. Up ahead, we have the left right lane shift. Let's see how the car handles this. Nope, it's not handling that well. So it is going uh, straight on for too long. I do notice a little bit of uh, correction at the end, but it's not uh, quick enough to trust the car for uh, allowing that. Let's uh, do the same and uh, do that at 60 kilometers an hour and see if that makes a difference. So second chance here. Let's see if we can get it up to 60 kilometers an hour. Okay, let's accelerate a little bit more. Doing 60. Nope. <laughs> it's not handling this uh, lane shift uh, at 60 kilometers an hour either. So, small regression bug here, but again, this is a corner case. So, uh, it's not too bad and probably um, when we get uh, the official release in Europe, then by that time, this will be resolved most likely as well. So now it's time for the conclusion. What do we think of version 2018.39.7? Um, I really like it. Uh, we do have that regression bug that we just saw uh, on that lane shift. But other than that, I think uh, it's almost all improvements. At the beginning, before the bridge, there was uh, the slide going to the right issue that we have, but we didn't quite see the same reaction in uh, other intersections. So uh, that might be a real corner case there for some reason. Um, on the other hand, uh, it, it handled the intersection beautifully. We are able to do a, a lane shift in uh, secondary roads. Uh, the way that it actually uh, does the lane shifts or the lane changes on the highway is a lot better. So yeah, I really like it and I'm really looking forward to uh, getting this update on my car. Now, as usual, if you like my videos, please like them and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye.